Hello everyone, this is Brian from Watch Complications. I'm glad you could join me for this video. I do want to take a little time to talk about Marlowe Watch Company. They've been around since 2015. They've had a good pacing of watch releases. Uh, new ones coming online, old ones going offline. They've had special edition releases. This past January 2019, they had an extremely successful crowdfunding campaign. They raised almost 600,000 pounds, like 750 investors, something like that. So they've found great success both with uh, their watches and, and the models and the designs, but also with getting people interested in the brand. So kudos to them. They really have a lot of things going for them right now. Their customer service is great. Oliver and Gordon, those who are running the company, are really good at interacting with people. I have had a few interactions with them, uh, communication one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, one interesting story about this watch that I have now is I wanted a specific number and ordered that. Uh, it ended up getting shipped out to someone else, but you know, had a conversation with Oliver, which is good. And you know, maybe I'll get a funky prototype in the future, please, Oliver. Um, and also, I'm thinking that I'm pretty happy with the number that they sent me. So it's all good, but it, they're really great chaps to sort of work with and talk with um, and interact with. Now I wanna be upfront about this. I don't like every one of their watches. I don't like every one of their special editions, but this is a company that has a, a philosophy and a design aesthetic that I like enough that if I could have invested as part of the crowdfunding campaign, I would have. However, being a US citizen and then in the UK, couldn't do it. The laws don't allow it. Maybe eventually they'll have some more investing opportunity in the future. But anyway, I, I do like this company. And again, not every watch. And I did not think I was going to like the Morar watch either. So just keep that in mind. So what I want to start with is, again, sort of that meta view in terms of design with Marlowe. So here's the one we're going to look at today more closely, the Morar Sands. But here are the Marlowe's that I have in my collection currently in the order in which I purchased them. First one was the Haskell Sand. Again, I like the sand theme. This is a, just one of my favorite watches in terms of having a semi-casual or really a really great dress watch. But the design of this thing is spectacular. But the Haskell is their their Swiss offering. It's their their one line that has Swiss movement in it. It's an ETA 2804. Marlowe sort of began around the concept of being hand-wound watches and it still remains their, their primary focus. However, the Moror is their first automatic. So that's something to keep in mind. All three of these are hand-wound movements, and the one we'll look at today is an automatic. But if you want more on this, I'll link it in the video and in the description of my review video for the, the Haskell Sand. There are four different colors of this, and now there are a couple special editions. There's a black special edition and a polar blue, which is brand new. The Sharewell, which was their first sort of Kickstarter campaign, I didn't get this until much later. These are now sold out and discontinued. This uses a Seagull ST36. It's a beautiful movement in terms of the design. It is Chinese manufacture, but it's um, really great movement. I actually like this one. I put this in some of my own watches I make. So you can see it's got the small second at six o'clock. But this is another great example of, of Marlowe design. A little bit tall. That's the only sort of big disadvantage to it. But, you know, this is a nice dress watch. Simple, just for telling the time. Again, it was a really popular watch, particularly being the first one, which was successfully funded on Kickstarter. The third Marlowe I got was, was sort of a last-minute decision. They were cleaning house after these watches were going to be discontinued by going out of warranty and things like that. They didn't need all the shelf stock, so they started cleaning things out, and then they, via their Facebook group, were offering, you know, a little bit of what was left before going, you know, more public on the website, and this was the last one that was generally available, uh, that is the Panda. I need, I needed a Panda? I needed a Panda for my collection, and so this, this gave me two things. One, it gave me uh, a Panda dial, which I like, and it's also a hand-wound chronograph, so this is the ST1901, and it's column wheel chronograph, just a lot of complexity there. It's a great bit of finishing for a seagull movement. So good watch, good design. And you can tell, again, I think sort of the meta view, the reason why I'm showing you these, is you can see that each of these is sort of utterly unique. They really are. But you can just see that they are somehow related. I don't know what that is. Maybe it's just because you know that they have Marlowe written on the dial. I don't know, but these are all unique. 
they could stand on their own. These all started at square one, you can kind of tell. There is some uh, thought that connects them, I think, particularly with the crowns and the designs and whatnot, but this is their first dive watch, first automatic, and somehow, somehow it relates to all of these. So again, kudos to Marlowe for creating lines of watches that are related but unique and tempt you to feel like you need to own more than one of a particular micro brand. That is a tough nut to crack for a watch enthusiast. Let me say something about micro brands generally. There are very few out there that I would consider buying multiple watches from. They might have a design that I really like, but having one is enough from that micro brand, particularly you know if you're wanting to have variety and, and brands and types of movements and design. You know, there's there's just a lot of choice out there, a lot of micro brands. So there are not very many that I would have multiple from the same brand or, or even think about it, really. Marlow is one of the companies, if not the only one, really, that I'm willing to have multiple of their watches. And like, for example, Helios has been a really popular brand. If you can get a hold of one of their watches, I have a Helios Seaforth that you've seen it. I've got a review on it. But I, you know, I would only have probably one. I've been tempted to get a second because they are really cool. They're great, um, and they they're holding their value for a micro brand. Uh, they're hard to get a hold of. They're, you know, there's a scarcity sort of problem with that brand. But I don't have this particular desire when a new model comes out that oh, you know, I really need to go for it. I'd really like to have it, see it, whatever. It's like I've got one. So in terms of collecting, it's it's just not something that I'm super into collecting multiple watches from the same micro brand. However, for some reason, I've ended up with multiple Marlowe's, and I like each of them. But this goes back to the design process and philosophy. I think it's really what drives it was driven by maybe Gordon um, more so. I think Oliver's more the business side. Gordon's sort of the design side. But anyway, whatever the, the process, the philosophy is, what it results in are watches that you can tell are cut from the same cloth, but they are standalone. They are different, and they, and they really complement each other. They're not trying to imitate anything else. For example, this is a dive watch. It, it's, it's a completely unique dive watch, and that's hard to come by these days. I think what they do when they start a watch is they start at square one, and that's how you end up having watches that don't look like they're trying to imitate anything else. They end up being completely unique. They end up looking like Marlowe not like something else. And it's so, particularly with a dive watch. I mean, there are just so many watches out there, even from micro brands that just, they all look the same. There's nothing that drives them. And, and you know, I didn't particularly like the look of this initially, at least when I was seeing online and photos and stuff like that. And then you get it in person, like, wow, it's just so unique. It's so different that, that it means something more than just, it's another watch. There's more to these than just being another watch. And that's what I think is cool about it. A lot of work and time goes into them. And so kudos to the company for one, your success that you've got going, um, but also for being yourselves, being true to what you do and it's working. So keep it going. What I will leave you with is that you can't go wrong by getting on board with this company. If you're looking for a micro brand, you're looking for something that's in a reasonable price point, you're looking for great design, you know, bang for the buck, and you want to sort of give to a company that is really doing a great job, fairly well established at this point, and just doing cool things, this is the brand you want to get with. Subscribe here. Ring the bell if you want notifications. Follow me at watch underscore complications on Instagram. Leave me your comments and feedback, and you know what to do. Keep watching.